Okay, so uh, good morning everybody. We, uh, we are starting the event right now and uh, <coughs> thanks for being here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, using Web Studio to create HTML5 SCADA and HMI graphics. Uh, and uh, just a few things before we start. Uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end and then uh, you're going to be able to uh, ask questions. So I'll go through the presentation. Uh, I will try to answer questions that you post on the chat as much as I can. Uh, but uh, you have a chance at the end uh, to ask any questions you want. So feel free to do that as well. Uh, I don't know if, you, if it is your first time here in one of our webinars, uh, but uh, if you uh, speak, I cannot hear you. Uh, so uh, if you say something, I'm not going to be able to hear what you're saying, then uh, the best way to actually talk to me is really through the chat. And uh, as I said, I'll try to answer any questions that you might have. And at the end, we're going to have a session uh, specifically to that. OK, so uh, let's go over our agenda for this presentation. Uh, the first thing that we're going to be doing today, uh, I'm going to be uh, or I'll have a brief uh, introduction, uh, just uh, very brief, just to talk a little bit about myself uh, so you can uh, understand my position here at Indosoft. And then we'll talk about the benefits of the solution that I'll be presenting to you. After that, we'll talk about the technology. We'll talk about HTML5, and uh, I'm going to explain to you a few things about it. Uh, the next thing we are going to talk about installation, how you actually get into Software Web Studio with HTML5 running, and uh, how you can deploy the solutions that will work on the different mobile devices. Then I'll have a walkthrough. Uh, I am going to go and open into Software Web Studio. We are going to create an application together, and uh, you're going to see this application. Uh, running on a uh, mobile device and on some different uh, uh, scenarios. And uh, I'll be uh, showing different functionalities to you. And then we'll have the Q&A session. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first, the introduction. Okay, so my name is Lorenzo Teodoro. I'm the VP of Engineering at Indosoft. I've been with Indosoft since 2002, and I currently manage the Indosoft Worldwide Development Team. So uh, just a message from the development team. We really enjoy working here at Indosoft, and uh, we uh, are glad that you guys are participating on, on these webinars. And uh, we make all of our best effort to create the best possible product for you. And uh, we really appreciate you spending your time on this webinar and learning how you can implement solutions to your customers using Indosoft Web Studio. So let's start with the benefits of the solution that I'm going to be presenting to you today. So the first thing that I'd like to talk is, you know, uh, what does it really mean to live in a mobile world? I mean, the, the world is changing, and we now see mobile devices everywhere, be it a tablet or a phone or whatever format you actually have in your hands. Uh, uh, the user experience has completely changed. And uh, if you simply adopt PC applications to mobile devices, they just don't work well. So creating solutions for mobile devices that are exactly like the PC, they usually uh, cause a lot of frustration and disappointment to the users. So a mobile solution has to understand the need of the mobile devices. And we're going to go through that, and you see how Indosoft was able to address this problem. The other thing is platform agnostic. You know, if you don't have a solution that can work across all the different operating systems, then uh, your solution is not complete. And you're going to get users complaining, because right now uh, each user wants to choose their own device, and they want to be able to use the device of their choice to access the system. So uh, that's what Indosoft has uh, been trying to do. Uh, on the PC area, it's, it's different. It's a world dominated by, by Microsoft still. Uh, but when you go to mobile devices, it's a different story. 
The other thing is cost benefit. So while you can have a solution that works across these different platforms, if, if it is too hard for you to implement that solution, uh, you end up not doing. And, and that's something that we are handling for you. And you see that in the presentation and the new capabilities that we are introducing within the Software Studio 7.1 Service Pack 2. Now, how do we actually solve this problem? So on this slide here, uh, I just want to give a brief overview about the Indosoft Web Studio architecture. Some of you uh, are probably already familiar with this, uh, but uh, I want to make sure that you understand this architecture so you can keep in mind how Indosoft can be flexible enough to fulfill the requirements that your customers have uh, in the visualization area. So uh, the Indusoft Web Studio product, or the concept of the Indusoft Web Studio product, is to have a single development environment where you can deploy to everywhere. And uh, be it a server running Indusoft Web Studio, be a local HMI, a headless device, or a control room, you have a single tool that you're going to be using to develop the applications on all these different levels. And you can even have your application on the cloud, be it a private cloud or a public cloud, it's up to you. But the idea is that we separate the runtime from the visualization. So you can deploy the visualization to these different devices and modules, and then you have the visualization as a separate entity that can run across different devices and platforms. So what are the solutions that we have for visualization? Of course, we have the local viewer that I'm not even uh, uh, showing here in this slide. But uh, one solution that Indusoft was the pioneer and became very famous uh, was the WebTeam client solution that runs on Internet Explorer. Uh, so with that solution, you are able to use uh, any device, uh, any Windows device running uh, uh, the Windows 8 uh, x86 or Windows embedded, Windows embedded compact on any processor, you can go and, uh, and access your, your runtime. So you basically type a URL that will bring the application. You don't have to perform the full installation of the product into these devices. We automatically handle the installation of a plugin for Internet Explorer that will show the application to you. The second solution that we have is the Secure Viewer. Uh, the Secure Viewer is great because it doesn't even require the browser. It is an app that we wrote. Uh, very light that you can install on your PC, and uh, by installing that application, you are able to uh, monitor what's happening in the system. Now, a lot of people are offering thin client solutions for model, uh, not thin client solutions, but visualization solutions for model devices uh, using the terminal server. And actually what they do, they run several different instances of their software in a terminal server, and, uh, and then they do a remote desktop. Uh, this solution uh, for what they are offering is really not ideal, uh, uh, especially because when you do that, because they run different instances of their software, it doesn't escalate well. If you put 250 clients connected, it will uh, uh, cause a stress on the server, and you, you basically need to have a supercomputer there uh, to handle even the most simple applications. And in our case, with the Secure Viewer, if you want to apply the terminal server solution so you can access the PC uh, uh, implementation with a tablet, you can do that. And it scales very well because the Secure Viewer is very lightweight. So you can actually have all these different terminal servers that are running, and it's not going to consume a lot of CPU and things like that. So it is a solution, but it has the problem that I talked in the beginning. While it is a good solution and it works, it gives you the PC experience on a tablet. And that's really not what your users are expecting. Now, what is really unique about Indosoft, and this is what we are going to be talking about today, is the solution uh, with the Studio Mobile Access. So the Studio Mobile Access was developed from the ground up with mobile devices in mind. We created this solution, and we are now adding more capabilities on Service Pack 2, and we will keep adding, adding more capabilities to this. But the functionality on the mobile access is something that was designed for mobile devices. It's easy to use on mobile devices. It recognizes the touches and everything. 
that is uh, uh, specific to the model device that you are actually using. And we handle that very well across the different platforms. So it doesn't really matter much which device we're actually using, be it a tablet, a phone, or an Android, a Windows phone, an iOS. We're going to handle that for you. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology behind this, the way that we are uh, evolving the Studio Mobile Access solution with uh, HTML5. Uh, I believe that most of you by now have heard of HTML5 and how it's actually changing the world. Uh, and uh, Indusoft is a pioneer in that area, putting this technology into the product and making it available to you uh, right now. Actually, we do have this solution already implemented on version 7.1. And uh, with the service pack to you see the new capabilities. So I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the browser history, just for you to understand how the browsers evolved, because this is very important to understand uh, the need for the HTML5 and what it actually brings to you. So the first browser uh, that was really like cross-platform and was able to display images and text was the Mosaic. That was uh, 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 launched in 1993. So it's, uh, it, it was astonishing to have that functionality in, into the browser and people were all excited. And then in 1994, Netscape uh, 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 was launched. And Netscape was the first browser to actually have JavaScript and SSL. So with JavaScript and SSL, then you have a lot more capabilities. You can do validation. Uh, you can allow users to enter data or access their bank accounts and things like that. So Netscape, by the end of uh, 1996, had 86% of the browser market. Now, in 1995, the Internet Explorer was uh, added to the Windows 95 operating system. And that really changed the game for Netscape. And by the end of 2002, the Internet Explorer had 95% of market share. It's an astonishing number uh, for, for a browser there. I, I don't think uh, that we'll ever see this high number again. But uh, in 2003, 2004, uh, Safari and Firefox came along. And now Internet Explorer still dominates the market, but Safari and Firefox offer real competition. Uh, today, of course, it depends on which source you look at, but Firefox has around 19% of market share. And uh, Safari, if you really account for all of the mobile devices and everything that Apple has, then it has a bigger market share. On the desktop, not as much. In 2008, uh, Chrome is launched. And by the end of 2011, Chrome had 17% market share. And uh, you, as I said, uh, uh, we're going to talk about the market share of these browsers now. So here is the current uh, market share, I would say, for the last year uh, for uh, the different browsers. This is from the website StatCounter. Uh, you can go to the website and check this yourself, and uh, you can actually play with the numbers there. This is actually desktop browser. Uh, I didn't include the mobile devices because we're going to be talking about mobile devices in a minute. And this is another source. This is net market share. Net market share has a different approach to measure the web browsers. And then in, in their approach, you see Chrome in the third place. Uh, the reason why I'm showing this uh, is basically for you to see that today there is not one player that actually dominates the market in terms of browsing. So you can actually get your website hit by all these different browsers. And the same thing for your uh, SCADA solution. Now, mobile devices, the uh, iPhone and, and the Android. So in uh, 2007, we had the launch of the iPhone, and that was really a game changer, right? So uh, according to IDC, by 2014, mobile devices will take over desktop as the preferred way to access the internet. And probably this is going to be even sooner. Uh, by 2008, uh, we, uh, uh, Android uh, was uh, launched with the Android phone. Then in 2010, we had the tablet. So uh, the iPad created a whole new way of interacting with things, and people started to 
uh, preferring to use tablets opposed to having the PCs, and the same thing uh, 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 happens. Uh, even you know Microsoft embraced this, and in 2012 they released the Windows 8 operating system, uh, which is also uh, a lot more tablet oriented. So this is all evolving around these tablet devices. Just to get an idea about how mobile is becoming more and more important, uh, you can see here in these graphs the number of tablet shipments uh, plotted against the number of PC shipments. So where the PC is pretty much flat for quite some time, you see a big increase in the number of tablets, and you can also see the increase in smartphones there. There are a lot of feature phones still in the market, so these phones are going to get replaced by smartphones. So it's a huge market and a huge opportunity to be uh, uh, and, and to be in. Now, where HTML5 plays an important role. So HTML5 is the technology that's embraced by the all the main platforms. I included here uh, the. Windows, Android, and iOS, but uh, it's not only them. Uh, e even if you go to BlackBerry or, or all uh, the different phones there, they are pushing the HTML5 technology or there are solutions to work on those devices with HTML5. Now, HTML5 is also pushed by any browser. So bro uh, it is a standard, and all the browsers are uh, uh, working to implement the standard and make sure the functionalities are there. And that means if you have a solution with HTML5, you're basically providing a solution to any device. Be it now or in the future, uh, the, any device is going to have something with HTML5, especially because HTML5 is the preferred way to offer cloud solutions. So things that you are accessing that are extracting data and things from the cloud and that you can access from, from your web browser, they are using HTML5. Things like Google Maps, uh, Gmail, and all these different uh, tools that we are already used to, they benefit from the HTML5 technology. And that's why you are able to basically access them from any device or any operating system that you are using. And our Studio Mobile Access solution is built on top of the HTML5 to offer these different capabilities in your SCADA system. Now, what is actually HTML5? Uh, when people talk about HTML5, they talk about different things, and, and, and it causes a, a little bit of confusion. But in general, uh, when you hear people saying, oh, I have an HTML5 solution, or HTML5 is working here, they are really talking about three different things. They are talking about another standard called CSS3, which people usually mix uh, in the words when they say HTML5. And uh, CSS3 provides gradients, animations, and transformations. I mean, there are other things there uh, in the CSS3 as there are in the HTML5 portion and the other things I'm going to talk about. But I'm talking about the ones that are more important to the SCADA system. Because now you can create animations on the browser. You can create beautiful pictures. And you can uh, uh, rotate things and things like that. And those capabilities are added using the CSS3. Now, HTML5 also means HTML5 itself. And uh, what the HTML5 standard has that we consider very important for uh, implementing SCADA solutions is the SVG tag, canvas, and sockets. Now, all these capabilities are tied together with uh, JavaScript. So JavaScript is actually the programming language that we use to uh, tie things together and provide a solution. Now, HTML5 progress. This is very important. The HTML5 is still a work in progress from the browser perspective. All the different uh, companies that you know, handle the main browsers they are working to implement the standard and to make their solution uh, uh, more HTML5 capable. Now, this is from the website html5test.com. And uh, it tells you in a scale from 0 to 500 how much of the standard has a browser implemented. And you can see here uh, that there is a 
great level of implementation in all the major browsers. So basically, all the main functionalities are already there. What this actually means is that all the different companies or the big players, they embraced HTML5. They are in for the technology. Microsoft, for instance, with Windows 8, they basically uh, uh, embraced HTML5 even as a core development for their native apps. And, uh, and this means that HTML5 is here to stay. It's not a technology like we've seen in the past with uh, uh, Silverlight or any other like Flash or the other ones that uh, uh, were in a transition period. Now you do have all these capabilities built into the browser. And you can use the browser uh, as a programming environment and create a solution that will work on any of these platforms. Now, what do you actually need to know about HTML5? Because I, most of the Indusoft customers they don't want to care about the technology. They want to care about the solution. They want to go to their customers, talk to the customer. The customer is going to present a problem. The customer doesn't want to know if you're using HTML5, if you're creating native apps, or whatever you're doing. All that the customer wants is to have a solution that will work across these mobile devices, and a solution that is consistent, easy to implement, and easy to maintain. So from the Indosoft perspective, what we believe you should know about HTML5 is Indosoft Web Studio. We want to make Indosoft Web Studio abstract the technology for you. So I talked about the technology so you can get a good understanding. But at the end of the day, what we want is to solve this problem so you deploy your application in Indosoft Web Studio, and you can have it in all these different model devices. Okay, so now let's just talk about the installation of the Studio Model Access. A great capability of, or a great differential of the Studio Model Access, even when you talk about other people who are offering terminal services solution and all that, is the complexity that is involved setting that up and get that running. It's not as easy and. Uh, while you can handle that when you have a big SCADA system and you have IT and you have people maintaining things for you, when you go down to the machine level or the small applications, you don't want to go through all that burden. And uh, the model access solution that Indosoft offers, it can be installed in the same computer where Indosoft Web Studio is running. And it, it's like a true step that I'm going to go through with you here. And you can get it running on a Windows XP embedded, on a Windows server, on a Windows 7 embedded, Windows 7, Vista, and Windows 8. So it's very easy. There is not uh, much to configure. We try to make it completely transparent to you in terms of configuration or what you have to set up. Of course, uh, uh, because we run on top of the IIS, uh, which I'm going to talk about on the first step, you do have to enable IIS in your operating system. Now, the reason why we go with IIS uh, is simply because we don't want to have a, a proprietary way to handle security. I mean, security is already very complex by itself. So if you want to deploy security on IIS, IIS is something that your IT is already familiar with. So you can go to your IT and say, look, I'm publishing this through IIS. Can you handle the security for me? And then your IT can go and handle the certificates, the PKI, and whatever is there uh, according to the, their own company standards. If you go to the Indusoft Technical Reference Manual, you're going to find information on how to set this up on your own if you want as well. But uh, the Internet Information Services is something that the IT is already familiar with. So we don't want to create a uh, proprietary web server that uh, has its own procedures to configure because that's going to cause confusion between the different users. Now, how do you actually enable and install the IIS? So the first thing you have to do, uh, you go to your search on Windows 8, and you go into Programs and Features. Now, once you access the Programs and Features, a uh, dialog will pop up. And uh, on the left-hand side of this dialog, you have this option, Turn Windows Features On or Off. So you click on that option. And then this dialog will open. So 
basically on this dialog, uh, what you have actually to be uh, uh, handling is enabling the IIS. Oops, all right. So let me just uh, highlight this for you. So basically, you have to enable the IIS, which is the first option here. And then you need to enable this option, which is the ASP NETs. And when you check, uh, uh, check that option, you will automatically enable ESOP extensions and ESOP filters. So that's basically what you need. A few check boxes that you check, and then you've got IIS installed on your computer. But how about if you're not using Windows 8? So if you are not using Windows 8, you can open the Indusoft Web Studio uh, Technical Reference Manual. And uh, under Team Clients and Mobile Access, you're going to find the Mobile Access folder. And underneath it, there is a, a section for Turn On Microsoft IIS. And uh, in there, we will handle the other operating systems. So you have the steps to uh, install the IIS on the different operating systems there. Okay. Now, once uh, IIS is installed, then how do you actually, uh, once IIS is installed, how do you actually install the mobile access solution? So first, if you have not installed into Soft Web Studio yet, when you run the into Soft Web Studio setup, it will uh, check this checkbox mobile access runtime for you. If the IIS is there, we automatically check this checkbox and we automatically install the mobile access. So you actually don't have to do anything. You just have to install in the software studio. Now, if you don't have the IIS installed, then uh, you, uh, after you, uh, and you install in the software studio and you get IIS installed afterwards, you can still install the mobile access. If you go to the Indo Software Web Studio Bean folder, you'll find this mobile access setup.exe. And this executable will guide you through the steps and will install the mobile access. OK, so I think we've, uh, we've had enough of slides. So uh, let's go and start uh, with our uh, live uh, uh, demonstration of the capability. So if you can bear with me for a minute, so I'm just going to switch the monitors that I'm sharing. OK, good. So uh, I believe you should now be seeing my uh, second, my other monitor. And uh, what I'm going to do here, I have uh, Indo Software Studio running. And uh, I am going to create a new application. And I'm going to call this application mobile access demo. Click OK. So these are just the steps. I'm going to create a, this in a different resolution here. And there you go. Uh, so we have the Indusoft application. This is very simple. Uh, you're uh, already familiar with this. For this presentation, I'm going to do something very simple. What I'm going to do and then we'll, we'll build it together, and then uh, the application will, uh, uh, will have all these different capabilities that we can, we can play with. But the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a Boolean tag called run, and I'm going to use this tag uh, to run or to stop my simulation scripts. Then I'll create another tag called think level, and I'm going to make this tag a real tag. So I can play with run, and I can play with my tank level. Well, uh, for those already familiar with the Indusoft Web Studio, you know we can just come here and add one of our graphics, right? And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, access the symbol library. And then here in the symbol library, I am going to select one of our switches. Uh, I'm going to get this switch here and add to the screen. Uh, then I want to go to the symbol library again get one of our tanks. Uh, let's take the very first one and let's add it to the screen. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add our friend tank level to this guy and uh, our tag run to this other one. So like the tag run. And there we go. So very simple. I'm going to call this main. 
and I'm going to set it as my startup screen. So let me close this because I don't need this anymore. Uh, I actually, for now, I'm not going to need the main screen. So let's run. And then all that I have is a button here. And I can go into the database spy, monitor my tank level, and write values to it. So I can see the tank level is also changing. Now, this is very basic, right? I could connect this to a PLC, to a device. Uh, uh, I could have this uh, talking to one of the over 250 communication drivers that Indosoft Web Studio has. But uh, for this presentation, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to create a simulation script. So I'm going to right click here, add my simulation, leave it always running, right? And then what I'm going to do is, if run, then tank level equals tank level plus 0 0.25, else tank level equals tank level minus 0 0.25, oops, extra 0 there. And then I, I will make an end if here. Uh, I, of course, I don't want this to go beyond my limits. So what I'm going to do here is if tank level is greater than 100, then tank level equals 100. Now, it's great that you can do these inline ifs with uh, VB scripts, uh, and you don't have to do else or anything like that. So if you just want to have one condition with one assignment, you can put it in a single line. Then I'm going to save this script, and there we go. We have the simulation script there. And you can see the tank level changing, and you can see that animation on the screen. I can, of course, turn it on and off, and then I will see the value changing. Now, I got this script running, got this simple app up to now, nothing new. Uh, so let's go and see how we can make this model. Uh, I can come here into the model axis, and then it will give me access to the model axis configuration. Now, the only thing that I have to do in my application is to really configure this area. And uh, I'm going to try to go over the different settings on this area. Uh, you, of course, can find more information on our technical reference manual, but you, you see how easy it is to actually get this running. So the first thing that I want to do, it's just the most basic uh, implementation that I actually want to do here, is to add my two tags and make them available into model axis. And we have this concept of widgets. It makes it very easy to operate with the model axis. So again, I'm going to show you how you deal with the Indosoft graphics, because you're going to be able to use that as well. However, this type of interface is very good for you to use on a cell phone and to use on these different devices. So I'm going to show it to you as well. Uh, you can come here and configure the run as a switch. This is a variable that you want to be able to write to. And here, when we work with the tank level, then you can select one of the gauges uh, to display the tank level for you. So let's go and just add a circular gauge. Let's save this. Now, once this is saved and uh, I have this running there, I can open any of my browsers. So let's just start with the Chrome browser. So I come here. I do have to log in. So once I log in, it brings me to the mobile access interface. As you could see, all that I did was to add two variables there. I didn't have to do any fancy configuration, anything complex, IP addresses, nothing. We handled all that for you. Now you click here on the process values, and you see this neat interface uh, with uh, the run and the tank level. And then I can uh, go in this interface, and I can change the value, and I can click write. And then I turn it off, and you see the tank level coming down. And actually, if I minimize and I contrast this with the Indusoft Web Studio, you see that in the Indusoft Web Studio, 
the value is changing as I change the value here on the Mongo Access interface. Now, the Mongo Access interface will allow you not only to do that uh, into the uh, Mongo Access browser, but it will allow you to do that on Safari and uh, also on Internet Explorer. So I'm going to have that running on these different browsers. Let's go with the Internet Explorer. I can click on it, and there we go. So we do have the same thing with the widgets showing. And uh, Safari is taking a little longer to load. Uh, so let's just wait a little bit. Not the Mongo Axis. I, I didn't even type the Mongo Axis URL in there yet. Uh, so it's actually still loading the browser itself. OK, so good. Uh, I'm going to do my local host here, slash ma. And then I'm going to log in as guest. And there I see the same thing. And I can access the information. And I can write to it as well. So again, on all the three different browsers you can run. But uh, I promised you to show this running on a mobile device. So let's see how that actually works. Uh, I actually have an iPod here with me. It's not even an iPhone. And uh, I set up a VNC uh, to that iPhone so uh, I can uh, connect to it. And here I do have the URL for my mobile access saved. It gave me access to it. I'm going to type my user and hit enter, and then boom, there is the Mongo Axis running on an iPod. It's, as I said, it's not even an iPhone. So this is pretty cool. And then I'm going to go click uh, uh, on my Run button there. And in the same way, I can go right to it. And you see thing changes. You see the tank level update. Now, this is, uh, this is great. Uh, before, before I go into more functionality, I will actually make some changes in this application. We have this running on these different browsers. I could have an Android device, a Windows Phone device. They would all be able to access this with very little effort. But uh, I also want to show how nicely we actually handle uh, when you have more variables into the system. So I'm going to actually enhance my uh, uh, sample application. And I will have something here called, let's call this upper set points, and let's call this lower set points. Oops. Let's create this as real tags as well. And uh, I can then come here to the simulation. And I'm going to make a change. Instead of doing this fixed number 100, I will use my upper set point. And then if it's greater than my upper set point, I set it to my upper set point. And here, I use my lower set point and copy. Again, the only reason why I'm writing scripts here is because of my simulation logic. Right? This has nothing to do with the model access per se. You could get all that working without writing a single line of scripts. Now, I'm going to go back to projects here into the mobile axis, and I will add my upper set points, and I will also add my lower set points. And uh, here, just to demonstrate the other capabilities, I'm going to show or I'm going to select different gauges. And I'm also going to enable write, because I want to be able to write to those set points. Then I'm going to save. Now, on my screen, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to add a couple text boxes for the lower set points and for the upper set points. So I'm going to add this one for the lower, this other one here for the upper set points. And there we go. So now I can type here 
the value, let's say, 80, and I can type in the other one the value 20. And as I change, it will go up to, uh, as I turn it off, it will go down to 20, and as I turn it on, it will go up, up to 80. So now that I have these two variables, I also want to display them in the model axis. So I'm going to copy them from here. Oh, I already put it there. Okay, so you're good. Uh, okay, so now I want to see this into the browser. So I'm going to refresh this so I can uh, bring the updated interface. And then I'll click in process values. Now, the, the cool thing about this is if you change your browser layout, we automatically handle the layout of the widgets. So it is very easy and simple to actually, uh, to actually use. And now I'm going to refresh it on my uh, iPod as well. All right. So you see uh, the process values. And there you go. So you have this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to flip the font. So I'm going to, or the, the iPod. And then you see that we automatically adjust. Uh, and one thing about these uh, uh, widgets is that the widgets that are in blue are the ones that I'm allowed to write. So I can actually write to my upper set points. So I can click on the upper set points, drag my arrow to the value that I want. And uh, let me just flip the phone, so uh, the device, so you can see it better. And then I can click on the right, right in the top there. And then I just changed my upper set point that automatically adjusted my tank level according to my demo. I can do the same thing with the lower set point. Okay, so. We basically got this uh, working, and we have it working on different devices with different browsers. We are very happy with that. And now we want to go and show the next capability, which is the capability to set up alarms. So well, I'm going I'm to go here and insert an alarm table. And actually, I'm going to add a few alarms. So the first, uh, I want to go with the tank level. So let me go select here my tank level. And I'm going to set a limit of the tank level to be 80. So if my tank level goes to 80, I will show a message, high level. And here, I'm going to type something in the selection field. It really, uh, uh, I'm going to show why I'm doing this later. But I'm going to call this TL in the selection. I'm going to copy this tag, and I'm going to add a low, low alarm. So now I have a low level. And then I will also call this TL in the selection. Now, I also want to warn the user if the set points that they, he entered are out of uh, considerable limits there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to conf configure my upper set point. So if my upper set point is above 90, I'm going to show set points too high. And here, I'm going to add in the selection SP. And I'm going to do something similar for the lower set points. Anything below 10, I'm going to show, oops. Set points too low, and I'm going to put SP here. So I'm going to save this alarm worksheet. Oh, this is wrong, actually. This is the low alarm. OK, uh, let me change it to low, low. It, it doesn't really matter. It could be low, low, low. But uh, let's make it consistent. OK, so now uh, I do have uh, this uh, configured. And I have alarm set up, right? And uh, if I go into my uh, iPod and I look at it now, I do have an alarm saying that the set point is too low. So actually what I did, I went and I entered into the alarms here. Now I'm going to go and change my high set point to 90. And then I see my tank level changing. And I already have an alarm saying that the set point is too high. Let me just acknowledge this different alarms. 
Okay. And uh, I will get into my tank with a high level. So uh, actually the tank went into high level because it's above a, uh, 80, which is the alarm that I configured here. And uh, that's basically why I'm seeing that alarm. So basically, be it uh, into the browser or into your mobile device, you can see and monitor the different alarms. And then you can pick and choose the ones that you actually want to acknowledge. Click on the Act button. You can even specify an acknowledgment uh, uh, comment there. And then you click Act uh, in order to acknowledge that specific alarm. So I'm actually having this low alarm as my high high that I actually removed. So what I'm going to do, if you can uh, bear with me for just a minute. Okay, just fix the problem with my low alarm there. So let me put this to 10. And as I put it to 10, uh, I'm going to uh, see the, the update with the low set point alarm. But if, if I change the position of the device, this is going to get adjusted. It got a little bit easier to, to, to look and see. And again, on the mobile device, I also have the capability to acknowledge or select and acknowledge the specific alarm that I'm dealing with. So again, if you look, I created the alarm, I configured my application, and I can see the alarms, and I didn't actually have to do anything in the model access configuration. Now, we're going to go over uh, a configuration that we do have into the model access, and now you understand why I actually configured uh, the uh, selection field uh, into the alarms that I created. So here, I only have my main node into the mobile access. The mobile access has this navigation structure built in so that you don't have to create a navigation by yourself. Uh, navigate on these mobile devices is very important. It's very tied to the user experience. So what we actually did, we created this navigation uh, built-in. So you, all you have to do is to define this three view structure selling, saying what is underneath what. So I have the main nodes there, and I'm going to add a node here called set points. Okay. Once I add the node set points, I can go and say specifically what I want to display underneath that. It can be something that's already in the main. It can be something completely different. It's really up to you. You can really organize this on different ways, uh, depending on how uh, you are actually uh, configuring your application. So for instance, if you are uh, doing a building automation application, you can add one node here per each chiller or per each floor of your building. And then inside each floor or inside each area, you can have sub areas. So you can go into that floor and you can add uh, the lights for that floor underneath that area. So everything that you do here is really just to configure the different points. So what I'm going to do into the set points is to add, <coughs> excuse me, is to copy the set points from the main, paste them in here, and I can even select different widgets if I want. So I can put circular here, uh, horizontal, and, and then save it. Now, I'm going to add another sub area, and this is going to be the sub area for the level. And I'm going to call it levels, even though I only have one level. Now, I can go into levels, double click, add my level. Uh, well, I don't have writing for the level. And then I will configure, uh, let's do a horizontal gauge as well. We haven't seen much of the horizontal gauge. Now, for each different area, you can have a different alarm filter. So for the set points, I can specify SP. Since I configured the selection field for my alarms in the set point, this will filter out the set points. And here in the levels, I can go and specify my TL, which is the other selection that I defined. Then I'm going to save this. Now again, all that I did was to specify the navigation 
and the filterings. Now I can log on into the model access. And there we go. We handle everything for you. Uh, you don't have to do much. The only thing you actually have to do is uh, look into your different alarms. They are now going to be filtered. So if I go into the alarms for uh, the set points, then I can see the alarms that are specific to the set points. And uh, oops, hold on. Let me log back in again. And go access the alarms. OK. Let me see. Just make sure I activate the alarms here. <clears throat> OK. So let me log back in. Okay, so here we have the upper limits and low limits alarms, and if I go to levels, then I'll have my tank level alarms, and if I click on main, I will have my main alarms there. So as you, uh, as you could see, uh, I now have the alarms divided, and I can navigate through the different ones, and you can create as many areas as you want, as you want. And again, uh, this same navigation is also available on our device. So if I go into the device here and I click on set points, then it will bring only the widgets for the set points for me. I can click on my lower set point. I can adjust it here to whatever value I want. And then I can click right, and then I will be writing to it. So very simple, very easy, and we got it working. Uh, so uh, now we went through alarms, and we went through uh, uh, the configuration of uh, uh, the, the, the process values. And uh, these capabilities, they are already part of the service pack one. I'm going through them because I realize that a few people know that with these very simple steps, you can get this working. And we wanted to get this message out there because once you show to your customers that you can actually do this and that they can use their Android phone or they can use their Windows phone or their iPhones to access the application as well as the tablets, they will see uh, they will be excited about implementing this solution and you're going to have a differential between you and your competitors then. Now, what I am going to do as the next step, uh, again in the model access that is available on SP1, is to show the trending capability. I really don't want to train uh, the run, uh, but uh, I'm going to enable here different colors for the tank level, uh, the upper set points. So let me select a different color for, well, actually, I'm going to make this my blue one, and I'm going to make the upper and the lower set points uh, red. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come here and uh, re-log in now that I have the train configured. And then I'm going to click on trains. And there I have the tank level along with the other values, right? Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to change the switch so I can see the value changing. So you get online trending right out of the box. You just have to specify which points you actually want to display, and then you can get it working. And in the same way, if I switch here to my mobile device, I have the trend working on that mobile device as well. Now, if I flip the device, it will automatically adjust it for me, and I can hide the legend. 
So let me go and toggle again my simulation here. And then I got the value there. I can flip the device again. So it's very nice. We handle that. And again, you can go to your customers. You can create these different areas, specify the filtering. You can have different trend variables per each area. And then the user can actually monitor this. So very powerful and very easy to configure. That's our key point. Now, how about if you want to see some trend history, right? Oh, I got this online chart. That's cool. That's great. But I want to see trend history. So I'm going to uh, come here and add our uh, variables for tank level. Let me copy and paste so I don't have too much typing. Another great capability of Indusoft is that everything is a grid that you can copy and paste. So I can copy and paste from different locations. Here in the history format, I can have either the proprietary or I can configure database. So I'm going to leave it now uh, in the proprietary format. And I'm going to save it. So now I have this being stored uh, for uh, historical data. There's not uh, much data there. Uh, so uh, what I'm actually going to do is more to display the capability. So the first thing, let me show you this uh, great functionality of the fill option. Why do we get some data being stored there? So if I change the fill here and I come back, then I can see a fill color on my pen. So I can also go back into the settings now, now that I have a, and uh, change this to be per, in percentage mode. So instead of actually showing the tag value, uh, this interface is going to show uh, the uh, a range between uh, minimum and, and maximum there. Oops, I just refreshed by mistake. So let me go back and then come back here. Now, the other nice thing about this uh, functionality is the fact that whatever you configured, we store in the browse cache. So when you come back in, you don't have to uh, modify those settings again. So that's pretty cool as well. Now, I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to stop the play mode. So this basically means that I want to see the historical mode. So this is not as easy to uh, operate when you are dealing with a uh, PC, but it's also possible because here in the history, you can enter in the history settings, and you can configure a start time. So I'm going to come here and change this to be our tree start at, uh, let's see, uh, we just started saving historical data. So if I go with 848, it would be a good time for me. And then here, in the end time, I'm going to specify 8.59, which is the current time. And then I'm going to come back. And then I'm going to come back. Now, the trend chart went to browse for historical data and retrieve the data that's actually saved there. I can go with my mouse or with the touch, and I can see the values of my variables there. And if I toggle the cursor, I can even drag this uh, around, and then uh, uh, it will get populated. If there is more historical data, uh, let's actually make this a little bit more fun. Uh, I think this script is still a little bit boring. Uh, what I'm actually going to do, if I'm above my upper set point, I'm going to go and subtract 30 from the upper set point. So I can get something that's constantly changing. And as I drag, or every time that I drag, we go and query for the historical data there. And then you get the, the value there populated. Now, this is wonderful. I mean, if you see there was no configuration, basically. I just listed the points that I wanted to display. This will work on any model device, be it Android, iPhone. So it is very nice. And again, all this functionality is built in into the product that you can go and download from our website. Now, Let's go into what we added to Service Pack 2. Uh, we've seen a lot of excitement on uh, the Service Pack 2 capabilities, a lot of positive feedback from uh, the beta testers and early adopters. 
and uh, we, I think it's time for us to share with you uh, these capabilities as well. Uh, Scott Cotier made a great presentation for us with all the capabilities we are adding to Service Pack 2, but we are now going to spend some time on this specific feature, which is the capability that we added, that you can create your graphics inside in the software Web studio, and then you publish your graphics and you make them available in your mobile device. So why not start with the main screen that we actually created here? So what do I actually need to do to make this graph available into my mobile device? All that I need to do is to come here, click Publish, and do a Save as HTML. You're going to give a security warning and all that. That's fine. And then once you do that, your screen is published. Now, where do I see it into the mobile access? If you go into the project and you click Mobile Access, hidden here and was hiding it from you, but there is another section called the screen. So for each different area, you can select a set of screens that's going to be displayed for that area. So you can get access to these screens. So I'm going to select my main screen, and I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to come back to the web browser, and I'm going to access my screen. Okay, so let's click here. Now, all of your screens are going to be listed here. So as you can see, this is a very simple and easy way to navigate. If you had a lot of screens, it would be easier for the, easy for the user to scroll and things like that. So uh, it, it is really the so, uh, solution for mobile devices. So if I click here, boom, I got my screen working. No plugin installation, nothing. All you have to do, you publish your screen. I'm going to talk about the limitations and some of the capabilities that are not there yet. We didn't have time to finish everything on Service Pack 2, but we want to release Service Pack 2 with enough capabilities that you guys can start using this and you can start, uh, uh, you can get the benefit of the technology and you can win your sales by showing these powerful capabilities to your customers. And I know you're going to ask me, oh, that's all nice, but can you show me that on that iPod that you have there? And here we go. I have the iPod loaded here, and I'm going to click uh, on uh, Screens. And that's my main screen, and I'm going to click on my main screen, and there you go. I have that on the iPod. Uh, that sounds a little bit too small, right? How about if I zoom in? So I can zoom in with my fingers and I can see what's happening. And how about if I want to turn the switch on and off? I can go and uh, click on the switch and turn it on and off, even on the model. So I click it here, it turned it on, and I see my level changing, and the same thing will happen. So everything online, everything on the fly. So you can create our application, and you can have it working on the different model devices. So this is very cool. I mean, it's, we are very excited to be releasing this, and we are very glad to be able to share this with you guys. Now, let's go over the functionalities that are actually supported and not supported by this implementation. So uh, I'm going to get started with, uh, uh, I'm going to go through the rebuild. All this is in our documentation. I'm sure what it is. But I think if we can go through together, uh, you have a very good idea about what's actually there. So all the shapes are supported. So you can add a shape uh, or any of these shapes to your screen. And then you can also associate animations to those shapes. So for instance, if I come here and I have this rectangle, I know I have a nice tank there that I uh, uh, took from our library. And I'm not a very good of a drawer, but I'm going to go and draw here my uh, little rectangle and uh, attach a bar graph to it. I, I really like few effects, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to add few effects. Let's make it red and uh, vertical, and let's add these few effects. Okay, great. So now let me go and click on the bar graph, and uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to type the tank level. I'm going to click OK. Now I have the tank level there. 
and I just have a regular bar graph configured. So let me save this, and uh, let me go and uh, access my screen again. And uh, let's access the screen. Let's go to, to the main screen. And there we go. We have a bar graph mode. So any shape, you can associate bar graphs. You can associate color animations. You can combine them. And this will work. And it will work on any mobile device. And uh, again, uh, let me go and show you this on the phone. And I'm going to zoom on the iPod. And I'm going to zoom in. And then you can see how it works down there. So, wonderful. Now, let's go over a little more. Let's, uh, let's add some more of them. Uh, let me add ellipse. And I'm going to change the color of this ellipse. And I'm going to uh, do uh, some fancy colors here. Uh, let's do a uh, gradient like this uh, if it's uh, 0. And then I'm going to here put, if it's uh, 20, then I'm going to make it uh, green, because I think it's a good level. And then uh, above 80, I'm going to make it red again. So um, I'm going to do this. OK. Uh, and uh, here, I'm going to use my paint level. Let's save it. Uh, and uh, we can see this. Uh, running on the Indusoft runtime. Uh, it's red because it's 91. Now, as the value changes, it goes back there. And uh, we can go back to our web interface. And I'm going to show you, I'm showing this in Chrome, but I could be using Safari or I could be using any other browser. It really doesn't matter. Now you do see the ellipse there, and it's changing colors. And again, I'm going to go into the phone, and I will have the same thing. And I can zoom in, and I can see the colors change. OK, so we added this. Uh, so all the shapes are supported. You can apply the animations to these different shapes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the button and the command animation. Because you can actually associate the command animation anywhere. You already saw the text box work, so you can create data entries. But uh, let's go into the button and, uh, and see what we can actually do here. Uh, first thing, uh, the, if you use tagging curly brackets and labels and things like that, uh, it will work. So uh, you can actually do something like this. Uh, if run then running, otherwise stopped, and put a tag in curly brackets in the button. Uh, the other thing you can do, you can go and attach the command animation. Now, for this release, uh, we are allowing the commands open screen, so you can switch between different screens. And I will show you how that works. We are allowing set, reset, tag, and toggle tag. So uh, on this one specifically, uh, I'm going to do a set tag so I can uh, click run on this one. And uh, uh, I'm going to just add here my run tag. And I'm going to show these screen switches in a little bit because I think that's also cool. So let me go and refresh to make sure I get my new button on the screen. Oops. I have security disabled. That's why it went through. Uh, uh, now let's go and click screens, main. And there we have the state running. If I click stop here, it will change to stop it. And if I click on my button, it will set it to run. And that, again, works on the mobile device. Now uh, let me go and uh, add another button. And uh, actually, what I'm going to do uh, with this uh, new button, I'm going to call a screen called main2. And uh, I'm going to switch screen. So I'm going to do here, I'm going to call open screen, call my main2. I will save this. 
Now let me do a save as and save the same screen as my main true screen. But now it will open the main and if I go back to the button here, I will say go back to main. Then I'm going to save. Let me just rearrange things. Uh, get some objects in the uh, different positions there. Okay, and uh, then let's do our refresh. Access a screen. I only have main. But now I have my button main 2, and if I click on the button main 2, uh, it will not load the screen because I forgot one step. I need to publish it. So it gave me the error there. I'm going to save this as HTML. Now I'm going to access and I'm going to click on main 2, and I see it just went to the main 2 screen, and then I can go back. So if you're not fine with the mobile access navigation, you want to set up and create your own navigation, you can also do that. Uh, another question that I got asked when I presented this to the beta testers and some people who were evaluating this for us was that, oh, how about if I do want to run some scripts? Uh, because we are working hard to get these scripts on this functionality uh, as well. Uh, but while uh, we don't have these scripts, you can actually run scripts. Uh, it's just not as easy as you do on the regular uh, uh, configuration. But you can add a button here to your screen. And uh, let's call this guy reset set points. Add the command animation to it. And then uh, here in the set tag I will call my I will set my tag reset set points. And I uh, create this as a boolean tag. So when this, when I click on the button, the tag will go to one, and I can actually here create my script. It will run when I have this guy, and I will set my upper set points to uh, 85, and I will set my lower set points to 15. Oh, sounds good. I'm going to save this. Go there so I can get my new button. So you only have to publish your screens for the first time. Once your screens are published, every time you make changes and you save, we will automatically publish them for you. So if you click here on the reset, my scripts were executed, and then I got the values changed. So you can actually uh, uh, modify and, and run scripts if you want. And then, uh, 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 now going back here, how about if by any chance, uh, okay, so I was talking about supported objects, right? So I went through the shapes. I went through te uh, text, text box, button are supported. Check box and radio button are supported. Uh, push button, combo box, list box, and smart message are not yet supported on this version as well as the data object. So uh, we are working to get this available to you in the next service pack. Uh, but uh, how about if you come here on your screen and you add a trend object that's not yet supported built-in? Again, you do have the trend in the model axis because it has the trend built-in, but the object or the built-in object is not there. So if you save the screen or if you try to publish the screen, they're going to show you an error saying that the object is not supported. So it is an easy way for you uh, to know if there is something into uh, the, uh, the object that you're using that, or the screen that you have that's not supported by the model axis. Now, to get a comprehensive list of what is supported and what is not supported, you can go and access the help. Into the help file, you're going to find the clients, model axis, in the area settings, there is a list of capabilities that are currently supported into the model axis so that you can create your screens following that. 
Now, uh, I could of course go over more and more capabilities and, and go over uh, some more of these, but uh, I think that instead what I'm going to show you uh, is something you're very familiar with. Uh, I think you are all familiar with the PC demo, right? So I'm going to load the PC demo here. The PC demo is a great, uh, we, we, we made the PC demo, uh, we put these new screens into the PC demo, the mobile access capability to access the screens, so you can have an idea about how powerful this solution can be when you have the mobile access capability. And I'm going to run the PC demo here. And as you see, I didn't have to change any settings on the IIS or anything like that. Uh, I can just switch applications and the mobile access will automatically pick up the application that you have run. So uh, here I'm going to go and reload so I can get to my new server or my new application. And let's go and access, for instance, the automotive screen. How cool is that? So you can get the automotive screen built in from the demo running here. Now let's make something better now. Let's go and access this from another browser. I have Safari here. And I can go in the automotive. Cool. Now I have this running in two browsers. And how about if I add a third one? I'm going to add the Internet Explorer. So I got here. I'm going to click on my screens. I'm going to go into automotive. There we go. Also, Internet Explorer running the automotive screen. And how about if I do that from my, my iPod? I mean, where would you see a solution like that, where you can publish, create your screens, and have it running at the same time across all these different devices? I mean, I find that really amazing. And then let me go back, and uh, I'm going to uh, come here, and let's just access another screen like the Wind Energy. There we go, Wind Energy running. How about if we go to water and wastewater? That's another one that I like a lot. And I, re I really like uh, to show that on, on the device. So here is the device. And let's zoom in. That's very cool. That's very cool. So you're going to be able to show this solution and have this solution, make them available to your customers. So uh, let me go back here. I do see some people are actually asking some questions, so let me go back and take a look at what you guys typed in the chats. Okay, so I think the first one, uh, uh, I was asked if uh, you can open any screen on your mobile devices or if you can only open widgets. Uh, the answer to that is right now you cannot open any screen on your mobile device, but you, you can actually open any screen, but it will only the objects or the capabilities that are supported and documented that supported in our manual are going to work. So as long as you create your screens with those capabilities, they will be fully supported on your mobile devices. Uh, okay. Uh, the, other, the other question is, uh, if you make changes on tags that are there in the server and you are changing the tags like I did on the run uh, and you want to keep track of who actually uh, modified the tags, uh, you actually need to add this tag that you are changing to run the script in the event logger. So if you put that tag in the event logger, that tag will be logged with the correct user. But uh, those tags that are changed on the server will be logged with the server user tag. Uh, okay, so we just uh, uh, got this uh, 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 running. So that was basically my walkthrough. Now let's go over a few other things. So uh, if you can give me just one minute. 
let me go and uh, get my presentation back in. So you should now be seeing my PowerPoint presentation again. Uh, that was basically my walkthrough through the mobile access. So let's talk about the mobile access requirements. Uh, mobile access can work on a series of different devices. Uh, uh, we have customers saying that they test on their BlackBerry and it's running fine. But these are the devices that we actually use in our testing environment. The Android Ice Cream Sandwich and Jelly Bean, the iOS 6.1.3, and the Windows 8. Anything newer than that uh, will work uh, because you're pretty sure the standard is there. And if you run into an issue that it doesn't work, let us know. And uh, uh, we will uh, uh, address any issues you might find. If you're using an Android version that's earlier than version 4, uh, we know in our tests here that the screen capability is not supported. You can work on a, with all the other different capabilities, but the screens will not be supported. If you are using version 4.0.3 or earlier, it should work. And now uh, we are open for the Q&A session. So uh, if you guys uh, have uh, questions, uh, you can either post it in the chat, uh, and uh, I will uh, try to answer those questions. So let me know. Uh, do you guys have any uh, questions on this functionality? Okay, uh, so I got a question here. Uh, how about uh, if I want to use a Linux web server? Uh, right now, uh, if you have a, a, a Linux web server, you're not going to be able to run the model access right now. You do have to use the IIS. However, you can have the IIS running on uh, your uh, Windows XP embedded even lower uh, and devices. You only have to enable the capability there. Okay. Can you change the default startup mobile access screen? Uh, actually, uh, this uh, I would say this yes. Uh, you can actually do that, but you can write. You have to write some JavaScript in order to get it working. Right now, uh, we are creating an interface where you can set your startup screen so that you can uh, load on, or, or select the screen you want on the startup uh, by typing the screen name in the URL. Uh, we are working on that uh, to make that available to you guys as a hotfix, uh, or not as a hotfix, but uh, in the next patch. If you are interested, if you need that capability and, and you are interested in it, uh, uh, please email us at info at indosoft.com saying that you want to be an earlier adopter. And uh, we will see, uh, as soon as we make that available, we will send it to you. Okay, another screen. Uh, another question uh, that I, uh, I got here is, can I use this on BMS systems? Uh, the answer is yes. You can use it on any automation systems that you want, any control systems that you want. Uh, you can have this on machines. One thing that people don't realize is that they get this for free within the software studio. Because every license you buy does come with a mobile access, uh, access license. So we actually count the licensing the number of simultaneous access. Uh, if you need more than one people accessing it at the same time with their mobile devices, you do have to buy mobile access licenses. But every single license of Windows Software Web Studio that we ship already comes with one. So you can demonstrate this to your customer and buying the cheapest license that we have they can get this functionality. Okay. Which smartphones are supported? Uh, I think I tried to cover that based on the operating systems. If you have uh, any uh, Android phone running one of the newer operating systems there, it will run. Uh, if you have iOS, it will run. And uh, Windows Phone 8 will also be supported. Windows Phone 7.5 is not supported. Can I get this running on Windows CE? Uh, not right now. Not on this release. Uh, uh, we are not uh, adding this capability uh, for Windows CE. Okay, so when is the Service Pack 2 going to be available? Uh, 
Uh, Service Pack 2 has been released internally. Uh, this week we are going to be sending an email to the early adopters and beta testers with the released version so they can uh, install and have uh, the first access to it. If you are interested in being a beta tester and participating on the Indusoft development, we really appreciate that. Just send us an email to info at and uh, uh, we will uh, 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 sign you up for that. Our plan is to have the release available for everybody next week. So next week you will be able to download this version out of our website and try it yourself. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Oh, okay. Another question. Uh, will you be supporting scripts in the AMA in the future? Definitely. We are working on that. Uh, we didn't have this at a quality level that was enough for this release. Uh, if you are uh, willing to try those capabilities, please sign up for our, our beta testers. Uh, we want to make sure uh, uh, you get that and you can try it. But yes, we are going to make these scripts available there. Uh, our, we believe we are going to be able to finish this uh, until the end of the year. So we have a lot of developers working to get this script functionality working. Uh, but uh, as I said, with the functionality that's already in it, you will be able to deploy your screens and, and, and get a great deal of functionality work. Now, another thing that's very powerful about this, it's just the time doesn't allow me to demonstrate, but uh, you are able to create screens using a toolkit that we have called XML Toolkit. And you can even create the mobile access screens programmatically. All right, uh, we got one more minute. Uh, I don't see uh, any more questions. So I would really appreciate if you guys could send us the feedback uh, on this presentation. I hope uh, uh, it was uh, valuable to you and that you are going to be able to, to use this uh, when showing it to your customers. And, uh, and, 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 and help us to deploy these solutions out there. Uh, we are working very hard uh, to making the software studio uh, uh, each time better. Uh, please try the service back to you and also send us your feedback. Uh, we added a lot of cool capabilities on the service pack too. Mobile access is only one of them. There are many others there. Uh, you can go over uh, the video that Scott presented. Uh, with the different capabilities, uh, with VBScript debugging and all the other ones as well. So uh, please let us know. Your feedback is very important to us. Uh, uh, and uh, we are here to make sure that you guys get the solution that you need for your customers. Uh, so I'm going to finish the presentation now. Oh, uh, what browsers are supported? Does it require only JavaScript to work? Which browsers are supported? I'm going to tell you which browsers we tested with. We tested with Internet Explorer 10, uh, even though uh, uh, we've seen it working with 9, but our, our QA was done with 10. We tested with the la latest version of the Chrome, so if you get the latest version of Chrome, it will work. And we also tested it uh, uh, with uh, Safari uh, uh, browser, especially running on, on, on the tablets. So if you're using these three browsers, it's going to work. It only requires JavaScript. There is no plugin. There is nothing that you need to install. You just type the URL, and you get, you're going to get access to it. All right. Uh, I don't see any more questions. So I would like to thank everybody for participating on this webinar. Uh, have a uh, great day. And uh, I will be presenting this session again this afternoon, uh, in case you got late to the presentation. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great day.